Hey, what's happening out there? What is happening out there in the world? I see you all over the planet. It's so incredible, Paul, to reflect on what we've done with this channel, 
I say it over and over. You and I sitting in this room, sometimes feeling kind of lonely and by ourselves, talking to each other. And now I see people from the Netherlands. Paul, you know we're huge in Latvia. Some people are joining us for the first time. We welcome you in. Welcome you. Thanks for joining us on this live. Uh, folks, we have new cameras, a big upgrade. You know, Uncle Paul has always been really good about just um, saying, you know what, let's let's upgrade this. So, of course, on uh, last Friday, I swiped uh, Uncle Paul's credit card for ten grand, and we have brand new cameras for the Everything Money show. One is on me. One is on Uncle Paul here, looking so dapper. And uh, one is, of course, on Trader Mo. Mo, you know, you look phenomenal in that salmon with those biceps and triceps pop popping out over there. You look, you just look so sexy. And of course, yes, I see people from Poland. Yes, guys, I love when you write down where you where you're from in the world. Brussels. Oh my gosh, you guys are incredible. We are now shooting on the Black Magic Pocket 6K cameras. We are pumping 6K right into your ear, into your face. And I uh, welcome into the Everything Money Show. So much to talk about. Uh, Pfizer has earnings today. Um, we're going to talk about, Mo, what the hell else are we talking about? I said so much. Um, we're talking about Pfizer. We're talking about Warren Buffett. About, go on. Yeah. We're talking Janet. about Janet Yelly. Uh, uh, she said some things. Some things. Yes. We'll that get are, into all that. That are they're causing a little shock in the market right now. Patrons, you know, I love you. And I know you're in the chat there, uh, giving us all your praise. I love you guys. You're incredible. Paul, I was having a drink last night, reflecting on just our path here. And those of you joining us, and just a wave of thankfulness came over me. And of course, you guys know us so well. Some patron just writes, Seth's drunk, drunk texting from the bar. And I was like, well, <laughs> it was pretty close, but I love you. So um, I would say our reaction videos are going over quite well. We, um, po, uh, po, the Stockmo Stock one has Mo, over 14,000 yes. views. So we talked about Stockmo, and Paul went rampant on his ass and on all of his BS that he's pushing. So make sure you watch that. Sven Carlin we reacted to. Um, we finally got a hold of it, and Paul reached out, and Sven reciprocated, so we're going to try and do something with him. That would be incredible to get him on the show somehow, obviously remotely, or help Paul, we'll just fly over there. Um, and of course, um, tonight at 7 p.m., we're going old school. If you're a long-time viewer of the show, and I'm talking real long, not like last year, um, Paul and I used to sit down here and have two-hour conversations with guests, and we're having one a, a guest back, Hesh Sagafi, uh, tonight, a two-hour sit-down podcast style joe rogan podcast style episode with all of us talking to hesh paul tell us about this episode before i, I guarantee you will love the episode we did it and i literally said this took two hours and they're like what everybody was i mean Couldn't the guy it. has an incredible life he talks about being stabbed he talks about how it influences life he's a phenomenally successful from a financial perspective uh he's a great human being just in general he and i have spoken pretty much every day for the last um the other yeah. day he calls me i'm like literally napping on the couch and he calls me, he goes, hey, Paul, I'm sorry to bother you, I know you're so busy. I'm like, I'm napping. And he goes, oh, okay. But he's a great guy, very successful. He's had, he's basically got, he's, fi he's like basically signed the paperwork for bankruptcy twice and never filed. And now he makes almost eight figures a year. Yeah. And he's a phenomenal guy. You'd look at him and think he was a skater boy over at the park. But he's I think, I think I think saying he looks like a skater boy is is nice. He looks like a homeless person. <laughs> he came out of the car. He he's like with, 47. He came out of the car because it was raining. He's running at me like this. Like he's he has, literally like he has like skateboarding shoes on. He like made his own pants. And but this guy's it, it's incredible. He goes from we were talking about our swings in our portfolios, this and that. His swing, he's like, you, you guys go through swings. I was like, yeah, but we don't go below zero to up eight figures to below zero again. I mean, his swings are out of control. It's a great interview. You guys are going to love it. Yep, so that's coming out tonight at 7. Obviously, it's, it's not live. We recorded a couple days ago, but um, you can see, if you're from around the world, you can see it whenever you want. I would say, Paul, um, something monumental happened today is, you know, people have been requesting more reaction videos. We're not going to make it our whole channel just reacting. Obviously, we're an educational channel. We're a comedy channel first and education second, of course. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, people are saying, let's re have Paul react to meet Kevin and Andre Jeek and and uh, Jeremy at uh, Financial and yada yada. And uh, I, moment of truth here, folks. I said, Paul, I, I think we should be careful because one day these people might come a call in and want to collaborate with us. And Paul, you hit me right in the face with what? F that. Listen, I'm going to call people out. If I don't agree with them, why would I ever want to collaborate with them? I'm not here to whore myself out. I'm here to provide a lot of value. Here's how we, here's how we prove that. I can, be, I can be selling you guys a ton of things I don't sell you guys. How many channels out there give you information because they need to make money? I got eight, nine, 10 businesses upstairs and a lot of real estate making me money. I don't need to do this. I do this the way I want to do it, how I want to do it. If you agree with it, thank you so much. The software is awesome. You can buy the software. You watch our videos. It makes us money in ads. But I'm not going to collab with somebody who I don't agree with ever. So we'll be coming at uh, Meet Kevin. I have some spicy videos uh, that, that highlight some of his, um, you know, his portfolio. Paul, he talked about in one What is he, 85%? 
I, I can't quote any numbers because I can't remember my own name half the time. But at the beginning of 2020, his portfolio was around Mo 650,000 and it ballooned up to 20 million by the end of the year. So uh, hey, that, that's, that's what he's doing. That's, uh, that's what he's very, doing. He's very he's lucky. Not selling. He's a very lucky guy. Isn't he? So um, that's what's happened today. Of course, we will, we're going to get into some news and notes. We're going to get into some stock analysis. We have videos coming out this week um, that I, I can sort of spoil. And patrons, you're in luck. Um, we're doing new videos for just the patrons to let you know what we're up to and what's coming out in the future. So stay tuned on that Patreon page. And uh, but Paul, shall we get into some uh, some ideas? First, Paul, your thoughts. Let's just go. Give me five minutes on Warren Buffett. Uh, Mo talked about this this morning. Warren and Charlie, uh, Berkshire Hathaway's annual meeting. Give us your thoughts on what the old fellows said is, and uh, how out of touch they are with the world and how stupid these guys are. This go is ahead, the Paul. annual meeting of everybody acting like they're best investors ever, but then when they say smart things, everybody says they're past their prime. So. Uh, they came out, they said things about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency that I agree with. They talked about how this is some of the most trying times in, in their careers, guys. Troy Munger's 97, Warren Buffett's 90 or 91, and they literally said this is the most extreme market they've seen in their lives. They've been together, they've been together for 62 years. So they've been doing it longer. Yeah. And they say it's the most extreme they've ever seen. So again, unless something's different, the only way this ends up being different is something is different. And guess what? The four most dangerous words in investing are, it's different this time. It's a very common thing said. So if you believe it's different, don't cry later when interest rate, I didn't think interest is going to go up. Okay, it's going to be something that causes a major fall. I don't know what it is, but retail investors can't all be right, guys. Usually they're not. Uh, so if you're relying on that, then good luck to you. Did, um, did they say anything that you disagreed with, Paul? Um um, Warren Buffett. Well, politically, Warren Buffett, I do not agree with. Charlie Munger has more of the views that I have, more libertarian. Um, uh, you know, they, 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 I think the things I would disagree with them on are things they have to do for their business. So it, I, if I were in their position, I would agree with them. From my position, I would not agree with them necessarily. But I think they're, um, I just think they're really smart guys. I mean, obviously, Charlie Munger is a Michigan grad, so I don't know how you get any smarter than that. And I, I do like how, I mean, d just looking at the Apple, for example, they sold Apple. Well, that was Warren Buffett's decision. Charlie Munger didn't want to do it. He told him he was wrong. And Buffett came in and he's like, yeah, I was probably wrong about that one. So they admit when they're wrong. I mean, they, they're, they're very good. They're, they're great guys to listen to. Oh, my Lord. We already got a, uh, a um, oh, we, don't, we didn't pick a, a charity for this week. That's right, didn't we? Oh, look, here they come. Okay, I see. Okay, okay Mo, what's your charity this week that, that Seth is going to be kind enough to match every dollar of? Um, you said Seth. Give me, give me one second. I that. want to pull it up. Well, I can't remember the well, name. I, I think it's appropriate. Yeah, but, 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 but what's hold going on. on I oh, wait, wanna, you were so I quick actually, to donate my money I last week. I actually want to take this, take this one from Susie. She sent it to me. She's like, hey, I really, I really like this one. It's the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Okay. Established 1987. American Foundation for Suicide Prevention is a voluntary health organization that gives those affected by Suicide, a nationwide community empowered by research, education, ad advocacy, and so forth. I, I think we got the gist of what the name was and that was what they did, so. Anyhow, $10, guys, that gets you your request for your stock um, right now. All goes to charity. The net proceeds all go to charity. Um, and uh, yeah, Seth will be matching dollar for dollar everything that Guds does today. So everybody go for it. Donate tons of money. <laughs> And the reason I bring this up with Seth last week, because of a friend of his being the charity, he put pressure on me to donate. So I'm going to reciprocate and do the exact same thing and make him do the exact same thing this week. With Paul's steel Ooh. trap mind, that's exactly not steel what happened mind. whatsoever. Steel trap mind? That was on my mind. Last week you one called me, I'm like, patrons, that mother effer. One I'm of like, the patrons, one of the patrons, get the, get the camera on me. One of the patrons said, would you guys ever match? And then Seth and goes, Paul, will you match? That's not what happened. Roll the tape, Tim. Roll the tape. That's not what happened. Roll the tape. Would we ever match? And sure enough, And by said, the way, I'm I'll never match. matching. And here's why I'm never matching. Oh, you're not matching. No, I'm so. not going to match because I already do enough. I can easily keep this money. I do plenty when it comes to charity. I'm very confident myself. You think I'm greedy. You think I'm greedy. I'm not matching anymore. Um, and that's that. Okay. Um, but I, Seth will for this week. I will take the higher ground than Paul, <laughs> as always. Are you guys and done arguing? I think we are. <laughs> Neil, Neil, our first, pa uh, one of our patrons, you know, I love you, Neil. He's asking for ticker symbol is C A C. Did we cover everything you want to cover? I don't know. They're coming in, Paul, and we got to just wait a minute. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't cover before. a lot of the. Uh, Aren't we? The Warren, the, the stuff, I mean, there's some really cool stuff that came out of this. Should okay. we do the car let's, example again? Let's I love go, the car let's example. go back. Should before, we do the S&P example? Please do. Before okay. we get into this, I know I, I love you guys and I have, I have your donations down. We thank you. 
Um, those donations will be matched. Um, no, they will not be matched. I was kidding about that. I'm sorry. I was kidding about that. I don't. I don't know what you're kidding about anymore. Are we matching? Or are we we're not, not matching? matching. I'm oh. not matching, and you're not matching. I was doing it to be funny. Oh, okay, we're not matching all of a sudden. Sorry about that. I so, said that. So just donate more money. Ah, okay. We're gonna get to donations, but in first, the show's all completely off the rails already. Mo, talk <laughs> about the cars. I love you. So let's talk about the cars. So. One of Warren Buffett's examples about how everybody's getting so excited about different sectors just going to the moon, this and that. He, he brought out the auto industry from the 19, early 1900s. So he took, he wanted to show that things don't just go up as an industry because they're gonna change the world, this and that, even whatever. So he, he wanted to put on one slide, all car companies that started with an M, the letter M, and he was gonna put those on one slide. He couldn't do it because he, there were so many car companies. He had to take M.A. as the beginning of the car company's name. Okay. <laughs> so um, from this, he, he had 40, 40 companies on one slide. In, in the early 1900s, participating in the auto industry, there were 2,000 new companies. By 2009, there were three companies left. And two of them went bankrupt in, in 2009, and that was uh, Chrysler and GM. Ford was the only one that didn't go bankrupt. The point is that the, these sectors, just because you're seeing that everything is moving like tech, it's going to be the biggest thing in the world. EV, even new car companies, period, it's going to be the biggest thing in the world. It's not going to be. These things just happen over and over and over, and this is proof of it. This was car companies, 2,000 car companies in the early 1900s, guys. The next thing that they looked at, and this was a great exercise, he took 1989. He took the top 20 market, top 20 market cap companies um, in 1989, and he and he was comparing them to Apple, Amazon, uh, Facebook, everything that's the biggest now. And he said, in 30 years, do you think that these 20 companies are still going to be in the top 20 in market size in the United in the United States? In 1989, there were companies like IBM, GM. There are zero out of those 20 that are in the top 20 of uh, largest market cap in the country now. Guys, cycles happen. Cycles are always going to happen. Just because you guys think it's different this time, and I'm not really sp speaking to people that, are, that follow this channel because you guys get it, but cycles happen. This is, it's not gonna last forever what's happening right now. And I think that Warren Buffett did an excellent job of laying out that platform and showing exactly what can happen and what will happen. Yeah, Mo, that was incredible. We did a, we did a longer video on our thoughts on um, Berkshire Hathaway there in your report, what Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett said. Uh, so stay tuned this week as that comes out. And um, Paul, should we get into some of these super chats, uh, donations? Yeah, so that's, so that's your opinion. Um, Go ahead, Paul. I don't know how to do this. Let me ask, how do I donate? I don't even know how to donate. It's a super <laughs> chat button. I don't know how to do there's that. A, there's, a, button there's a button with a dollar sign kind of thingy. Yep, that's oh, that's where it is. Underneath yeah. the where you say something. Oh, okay. So show my screen. Yeah, we're showing it there. Right here, oh, just kids. Little button right there. Right, little button right there. Or you, you can, hit super chat. Or you can get a hold of Mr. Roderick on WhatsApp, which is these spam guys. On every video we put out, you see all these spam. Forget, it, I'm going off the chain. Here we go. Um, let's look at what Neil said. Um, the first company, Paul, is CACI International. It's an information technology company, American Multinational Professional Services, out of Virginia. Um, if you have any idea, if you have any news on this company that we should know about, go ahead and put it in the chat because we certainly don't know. If you're watching this video later, later we, we take a high, uh, a high altitude look at some of these companies. We have not done our due diligence in terms of, um, I'm going off the cuff here, Paul. No, I like it because it's true because everybody like wants to kill us and it's like, no. Yeah, people in the comments are like, why would you guys do a video about nothing you're talking about? Because we're look people are obviously suggesting these companies and we're looking at them. They want to know Paul's advice. And, and so, Paul, go ahead and take it away with our eight pillars on uh, CACI. Did they call us? Cassie, I don't even Jackie, know. Jackie, I don't know. Right, Market cap of six point six billion. Uh, PE of seventeen point seven. Check mark there. Okay. Profit margin of six point four percent. X. Now, Seth. Go ahead. You said IT company. Um, IT tends to have very high margin. <laughs> Informational technology. Yeah. Oh, look, you're right. Of course, this is. Hmm. That's weird. Okay, but either way, a check and an X. Last year's um, profit was three hundred seventy-four million. Well, the last twelve months. And the cash flow was six hundred million. So the big difference between cash flow and profit, you gotta look into that a little bit better. This so so far, one check, one X. This is khaki. So a revenue growth over the past five years is pillar number three for khaki. A uh, four point two two to five point eight nine. One of the things I want you guys to look at is go look for acquisitions because IT companies tend to try to consolidate because it doesn't take. Um, for example, everything money right now. We have three full time developers. 
we have 2,100 users. When we have 21,000 users, guess how many developers we'll have? Go on. Three. Oh. I mean, it doesn't take, that's a thing. Once I you see. create the software, it doesn't take a, a bunch of repetition as you grow. So it's kind of an upfront investment. So okay. there's still a check here. Pillar number four is revenue growth. Oh, I like this. 156 to 375. Check, check mark there. Okay. Check, please. Um, pillar number five is shares outstanding. You want this going down for number five. Unfortunately, we do not. 24.39 to 25.23. It's an X. It's not huge, around 4% or so, but it's still an X. Um, I don't know. Neil, will you put in the comments why you, you were in love with this stock or you wanted to learn about it? Other people saying, we, Paul, you and I looked at this. A we did few, look at this one a while okay, back. So, so we'll keep going. Um, the shares are going up, unfortunately. Now, pillar number six is current assets over current liabilities, Paul. One billion versus 772 million. So we have a check mark there. Check mark. And for the be all and end all free cash flow. Now, yep. guys, remember, this is our everything money software. 70 or 80 cents a day, it gets you this. You're crazy not to buy it. Um, I, I added the free cash flow section to the investing section. This is not part of any investing cash flow statement. It's cap, cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. It's the money you use for dividends, stock buybacks, uh, paying down debt, making acquisitions. 207 to 600. Big check there. Yep. And an average of 338. So what was the market cap again? 6.7 billion. Okay, 6.7 billion divided by 338. That is 20. 6.7 divided by 0.338. Yep. 19.8, yes, Paul. Okay, so it's a check mark, barely, but it's a check mark. 19.8, check mark. But here's the deal, guys. Last year, they did 600 million in free cash flow. The previous year was 582. It jumped up big time. And look at this, look at these acquisitions. They made a billion dollar acquisition right here. So. Uh, the, Neil said, I heard another YouTuber talk about their future growth. Neil, I'm surprised you're watching anyone else besides us. And what did your take? <laughs> um, I must have missed the previous one. That's okay, What was the friend. future growth they talked about? Does anybody know? Because their growth isn't that great. If you saw, what was their revenue growth? It wasn't that amazing. You know what I mean? If we go to here to the um, eight pillars. Uh, so, uh, uh, Khaki bought back 2 million shares a few months ago, um, someone's saying. Did we see that in the share buyback? I do not see that in the share buyback. They might have announced the share buyback. Did they actually announce it or did they actually do it? Mm, I don't know. Okay, either way, guys, uh, this is, now here's the deal. $6.7 billion market cap, and last year they did $600 million. What is that multiple? That is 11 to 1. Oh, my Lord. It's not bad, mm. right? Yes. So you're looking at this saying, okay, we like, to, we like it when it's under... When it's close to single digits, you might want to just, I mean, $6 billion, I don't know if there's options on it you can buy, but the bottom line is, I don't think this is terrible. Um, the shares are increasing. Hopefully, they did buy back 2 million shares with their growing free cash flow. And do your research on the company, but so far, nothing here makes me go, oh, now I don't know their debt levels. Their debt levels are um, pretty low compared to their revenue. The revenue is $5.9 billion. They only have like $3 billion in total debt. So, guys, it seems pretty low, seems pretty reasonable. Do some research on this thing. The only thing I don't like about it is how an IT company has such low margin. I mean, whenever we do IT, it's always huge margins. Yeah, 70, margins. 80% sometimes. Um, if you're in the Bidness Nation, that middle Patreon tier, and you are trading on that beautiful Patreon team in the Discord, you are in love, as I am, with the Egyptian dream boat that is Mo, and is stunningly handsome today. He's got some sun on him. He's got the beautiful salmon shirt, those pec muscles popping up. Are they trading khaki, Mo? What's going on with khaki over um, there? So right now, as you can see, so this actually was a 50% roll stock. Let me draw it in a different color. This was a 50% roll stock, as you can see, and it, it, it keeps trying to push up, and you had that little bit of overhang that was happening. It wasn't necessarily 50, but it keeps hitting that resistance point, and it's right there again. So what do you do? You need a lot of volume to get through. That's what you're going to need. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this is going to be our area that we need to push through, and we're sitting there. So your trend is moving up. You're kind of getting to that overbought area, which means that it, the, price is, the stock price is going to probably slow down a little bit on you again. But if you can, and if you want to keep watching this, if you are in this already, I wouldn't say get in it for the first time. Yeah. See if there's an influx of volume that's going to push you through um, whatever this resistance point is, 265, 267, whatever it is, and then you can do it. I think there are better options out there for you, though. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good plan, Mother. Obviously, there's, there's thousands of stocks out there, and we're trying to find the really, really good ones. So final take, Paul, on Khaki. Um, I, do you, I, I like it so far. I like the financials. I mean, the only thing that's a question to me is... Um, is the increasing shares outstanding? Oh, let me look at one other thing. Let me look at the return on invested capital. Okay, the return on invested capital isn't great. Five years of 5.19, the return on assets 
So this is one of the things we're going to add to our analysis is the return on invested capital. I want to see a higher number. So I do want to discount based on this low return on invested capital. Um, I'm also, by the way, the one interesting thing about, about return on invested capital, if you go try to Google how to calculate it, you're going to get 30 different responses on how to calculate return on invested capital. If you read a 10K, <coughs> every company calculates their return on invested capital very different. I would pick, if I were you, a standard way to do it, one that makes sense to you, and apply it. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible, and we're going to go at it that way. Make sure you guys are tickling the thumbs up if you love what you see here. We cer certainly appreciate it. Mo, I had a friend down in Columbus who uh, uh, subscribes to the channel, but now that he said he opened up uh, yesterday morning, and your morning show got suggested to him out of the blue. Really? So I guess out of nowhere. Yeah, I guess we're hitting some of the um, hitting some, awesome. some things out there. That's great. Okay, Paul, let's move on to the next stock. This is brought in a donation through Louise, a $10 donation through Louise, said he wanted Skyworks Solutions. Ooh. Skyworks Solutions. Company. The ticker symbol is SWKS. Skyworks Solutions, an American semiconductor. Oh, these semiconductors are running out of chips. It's in a- uh, Oh Ir my God, Ir you're right. Irvine, California. Yeah, Elon Musk is talking about he can't get the dang cars out because of the chip, sh this chip yeah. shortage we keep hearing about. So yeah, so my good friend, Mike Williams, who runs a dealership in St. Louis, is telling me that the chip problem has caused their inventory to really plummet. That's the same thing with uh, Land Rover. Same. Oh, I, my, my wife is hearing the same out of Honda. They can't get the dang cars in. So Skyworks yeah. manufactures semiconductors for radio frequency and mobile communication systems. We have never heard of this company. I'm sorry. I have never heard of this company, and we've never really analyzed it. We haven't looked at anything, so we're going to look at it right now. The stock price is at 172, Paul, and it's way, way up from its normal levels of well below 100 in the past yeah, year. Okay. So here we go, guys. What is the market cap for Skyworks, Paul? $29 billion, PE of 27X, great profit margin, 27%, expected for semiconductors. So we have a check there. Now, we have a dividend here of 1%, $310 million. So... Um, we want to make sure that, that the free cash flow can definitely support that dividend yield. So, so far, one X and one check. I can't say Skyworks without thinking about Skynet, Paul. What's Skynet? Oh. Mo, I know you don't know. Skynet, I have no idea. It's Terminator 2. Or is it oh. Skynet? Oh. <laughs> Terminator 2. That's, that's what's going to take us all out. So, on my first rated R movie, I watched Paul when it came was out. Was it really? Terminator 2. Boy, and all that blood everywhere, that got me going. When I was Mine a was... Um, <laughs> Crickets? Actually, I don't remember my first rated R movies. I assume, I assume it was basic instinct knowing you. Let's get after it. Um, <laughs> revenue growth over the past five years for Skyworks. Indecent proposal might have been it. Of course. 3.28 to 3.97. Check mark there. How about the profit growth for Skynet? I'm kidding. It's Skyworks. Um, $897 million to $1 billion. So check mark. But guys, it's not really exciting. Okay, that's what you like. But it might though. be, yeah, exactly. That's what you like. Shares outstanding. Want this number going down? Are they doing their good they job? They are doing a great job. One eighty-five to one sixty-five. Yeah. Check mark there. I mean, that's over ten percent drop in number of shares outstanding. Okay, how about current assets over current liabilities? Is pillar number six? Two point five eight billion down to five hundred seven million, and only one billion in total liabilities set. So they have one. $0.5 billion extra. Wow. So your $29 billion market cap goes down to $27.5 billion. Because they have enough cash on hand to pay off all the company's debts, <gasps> not just the current ones. Um, Mo, you still struggling with the, those, uh, the pollen in your face? The allergies? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Free cash flow growth is, is pillar number seven. We want to look at their free cash flow and can they afford that 1% dividend? I bet you they can, Paul. A billion down to 880. So that's an oh. X there. They can't afford... The uh, dividend of three hundred some million. Now here's the deal, guys. It it's been decrease. It went decrease, 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 increase. So maybe it's rebounding, but the average is nine hundred twenty million. We're gonna take that 20 27 point five billion divided by nine hundred twenty million, and what is that? Twenty nine thirty. Call it thirty to be safe. Thirty times free cash flow for the last five years. That's an X, guys. Yeah, boy. So um, one thing I want to understand is. Why is there why why their um revenue why did their cash flow decrease over the previous years? Especially oh well, this is one way. Look at this. Their capital expenditures really jumped up. So this might be a very permanent stage, permanent state of their free cash flow. So you might want to factor the free cash flow based on the most recent years. And so I'd want this company to be selling, I hate to say it, for about half. Yeah, Paul, I, I figured with that free cash flow not looking so hot, you were not. Now I will say this though. Go on. Look at their return on assets. Okay. Very high. 21%. Return on assets and return on invested capital a lot of times are looked at very similar. Um, that's a very, very high return on assets. This is the kind of company you'll want to pay a lot of money for because they do a good job of making a lot of money on their assets. 
I don't know why the return on investment capital is not showing up. There's probably some glitch there. But either way, um, go understand why their capital expenditures increase. This is why we look at financial statements, guys. It tells a story. The story we have here is capital expenditures increased, and that is why they um, and that's why their free cash flow decreased. I hate to say we got to slow down. Sorry, Paul, interrupt on those donations. We have eight stocks now. I don't even know if we can get through all of these. And one of them is a Canadian company, Paul. So Dimitri might have to hang tight for a moment. But with that said, let's head over to Trader Mo. Mo, did we already look at this? I'm sorry, I'm so confused. The donations are pouring in. I can hardly take it. It's like one of those telethons. You know those old telethons, Paul, with the guys yeah. up front and the people in the back on phones? <laughs> That's me right now. Mo, what, what, what the hell company are we even looking at here? Skyworks. Skynet. So Skynet. Go this, ahead. This is a big, uh, this is a big thing in, in the 5G world, I guess. So um, let's see. I mean, I guess they had bad news. I'm assuming that this massive gap down was earnings, and we are just moving down by the day. So clearly a short, moving through the sweet spot nicely. If you want to do something with it, to be honest, you could probably do it right now. If you wanted to be extra conservative, waiting for tomorrow for an engulfing candlestick to the downside, Giggity. and you might have a good stock here for you. Susie, I see your donation there. Susie's always making it rain. I love you. You know, I love you. And Vinny Vin, of course, is bringing the free poncho. And Vin, um, you got to see Paul. Paul's got a watch on. He's loving it. And I'm wearing Paul's old watch that got, went to Mo and me. So like, <laughs> the watches are getting passed around the but, show. But the funny something. part about that watch was... We were oh, at a yeah. bar one night. Yeah. I was wearing the watch. Seth said he liked it. I go, Seth, do you want it? He said no because he was a little awkward. We were around other people. He felt awkward taking the gift. And I was like, it was for you. Mm. So I gave it to Mo. And then Mo was like, yeah, I'm done with it. So, so now I got the watch. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, this is our take on Skyworks, Paul. You, as you always say, do more research and make sure it's up to you. But an interesting company is way high. So interesting okay paul we got to keep flying here because the donations are coming through i can't even keep up with it the next stock is from andre s andre i hope you're still watching it's the ticker symbol is f m s this is frencius medical care or frencius what the frencius 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 medical care kidney dialysis center company um, oh my wow, God. look at this look at place. This. Okay, this chart oh is all goodness. over the place. Yeah, it is. Um, they provide kidney dialysis services for 4,000 outpatient centers. 4,000 centers? Jesus Christ. And 350,000 patients. They deal with renal disease, which I don't know what part of the body that is. I know kidney. what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah, no, thank you. And, uh, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. Yeah. I wasn't thinking kidney. Renal disease. And uh, Okay. Um, wow, this is incredible. Um, yeah, Andre, um, here we go, baby. This is And thank you. you to Sue for um, signing up for our Patreon just now. Oh, how nice. I love you. I love you. Okay, let's keep going. Um, All right, Steffi, $23 yeah. billion dollar market cap, 16.9 PE, check mark, low profit margin, 6.5%. Uh, uh, they have a dividend yield, pay about $400 million or so in dividends per year. So, um, so far, 1x, one check, good stuff. Pillar number return three. on assets, very low, by the way. Return on invested capital, under 5%. I don't like seeing that. Pillar number three is revenue growth for... 19.9 to 21.46. Check mark there. For Guys, Insinius. that's barely any growth. So if anybody tries to tell you there's a growth story here, you have to figure out if the company's planning something. Okay, how about profit growth for Francinius? 1.37 to 1.4. Barely a check mark. Mm. So this, this uh, pillar number eight multiple with their free cash flow must be sounding like it's pretty low, Paul. I'm hoping so. How about their shares outstanding, which is pillar number five, Paul? What are they doing? 612 down to 585. Well, that's good. That's very good. Yeah. So they're they're buying back shares. All check besides PE. All is that yep. right? Wow, okay, great. We're, we're, we're doing good. Current assets over current liabilities for this company I've never heard of. Go ahead, Paul. 8.74 versus 7.4. Very high liabilities total, though. But they're um they are they do have a check on the current assets, the current liabilities. Okay, free cash. What do you think? All right, so free cash flow, guys. One point two billion to three point eight check mark. Now here's the deal, Steffi. One point two, one point two seven, one point two one, one point seven three, three point eight. What happened? You got, yeah, you got to find that out, guys. A sudden wave of kidney disease. Is, is it because of? I mean, why? Because of COVID? Was it because they provide? They, I don't know why they just jumped up. What are you? What are you squinting at? The what, what's the jump? One point oh. seven to three point eight. Oh wow. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so I, I get it. You gotta figure out um well look right here. Change in payables and accrued expenses. That was a big jump. So guys, hmm. 1.9 billion, so call it two billion dollars to be safe. What was their market cap, Sefi? 
I missed it. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, There's I just gotcha, like I gotcha. hundreds of comments coming in. You know, I love you out there. Uncle Mo. Uh, 23.4 billion. Which so 23.4, it's roughly 12. Um, so it's a check mark there. Um, uh, you know, but the thing is, there's a big skew to this last year. You got to find out why that's the case. You really need to figure out why their, their um, free cash flow really skyrocket. Is it sustainable or not? Yeah. If it's sustainable, guys, they're selling for like seven times free cash flow in the last year. Three, if it's sustainable. Three years ago, Paul, this, this stock was trading at a 54, 55. What's well, that now? 39, 39 40, bucks. 40 bucks. And Jay, bucks. thank you for signing up for our, um, for our what's it called? A Patreon. I love you. Yep. Nice job. Yeah, so it's rather low, but it's been bouncing around for years now. Uh, Paul, I feel like, uh, and maybe you get this way too, is like with all the confusion, this is, I, I'm probably not going to be interested in this just because I don't know what they do, how they do it, why the price is all over the place. But look at them pillars so. though. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Seth, Tell you me. don't know what they do. Go find out what they do. That's exactly, exactly it. Like, go <sighs> find, you. this is what we talk about. We don't do the deep dive now, but this is enough for me to go, I'm going to go find out what's going on. Oh, Tim, you oh, said the cleaning know. business. And he said, fabulous company. It was one of his customers. He used to specialize in kidney, wasn't it wasn't kidney centers? He specialized in, in commercial cleaning. Yeah, so let's go. Um, so I are they thought, like DeVita? I always DeVita thought Tim was into renal. Um, what was that? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, this is legit. We should probably look into this, Paul. <laughs> we should look into this. Cool. T Tim, I, I told Paul, I always knew you were into renal over there. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> let's, I love it. let's keep going. All right, that is our take uh, on. Hold on, hold on. I want to do this. This, this is important. <laughs> Mo, I completely forgot about you. No, this is Frencenius. important. Frencenius, go for it. Go for it, Mo. Okay, guys, look at this chart. You can just see there's all these little gaps all over the place. Let me just zoom in on one part. This is, uh, and I'm zooming in on this because I want you to guys to see this is something that you avoid from a trading perspective. Look at just gaps all over the place. Every day there's just crazy news that comes out or no news. I don't really know what happens, but you get these jumps up and down and up and down. This is way too crazy to trade. If you want to day trade it, go ahead, but do not be in this overnight. This thing is way too crazy for that. How's the volume on this company, Mo? Am I, what, Let's take a look. And by the way, they have, earnings. Asking the questions. they have earnings on Thursday. So maybe we just jumped the gun on doing this company or maybe that's why. Isn't this, Mo, is this sort of oh the- Oh my um, gosh, so- talk, talk to me about it. So I, I like average volume of um, at least 1 million shares traded per day. And 1 million, um, th th I mean, they're trading 250,000 shares traded per day or something Why do you like, like a million shares? I just found that when you have more shares that are traded per day, there's less of this up, Well, yeah, because more down. liquidity and all that stuff. Exactly. So this is a great example of a company that is not sharing it. Uh, tra trading a thousand million shares per day, you get these jumps all over the place. I see. Um, Jack is, is 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 checking in from Switzerland. Jack, we're coming to Geneva next year, all three of us. And uh, so, if you're in uh, Geneva, see us there. Um, okay, that is our take. <laughs> Do you know what you just did there? What? <laughs> what? We are going. Are we going to have dinner now with people? I'll get coffee with the guy. I mean, yeah, I'll get coffee with the guy if he likes us enough. All right, sure. Good. Maybe know some around around the town. You know, show us around a little bit of this and that. Okay, right. that is our take. Jack, I just hope you're not going to stuff us in some sort of uh, trunk of some car. And yeah, this is going to turn into hostel. That might be fun too. <laughs> Taken. Taken. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's keep going. We're going to keep on rolling. The next ticker symbol and the next donation is from Ann Bosserman, and it is Big Lots ticker symbol. Oh, Big Lots! Do I have a story for you? So what do you have? Got away. What, Paul? About big lots. The okay, so this is exactly the point, guys. Look at big lots price, seventy bucks. Holy, mother. big lots. Uh, a little over a year ago, was at eleven dollars a share. Mm -hmm. I loved it. A friend of mine brought it to me and said, "Paul, what do you think?" Of it? I'm like, "I love this." So I went to my good friend Gary, and by the way, I love Gary. But this is how he talked about independent thought. I said, "Gary, I really like this company. What am I missing?" His comment was, "Paul, would you be surprised if big lots wasn't around in five years?" He goes, "I would not be. So I'm not investing." And me being the person that did exactly what everybody else does out there, like, okay, Gary's better than me investing. I'm going to listen to him. Look $70 a know. share. Now, the reason I bring that up is I was looking at going, I believed in big lots. I believed they would have been around in five years. Would I have been shocked that they weren't around? No, but I still believed they were going to be around. And this is an example of being an independent thinker. And of course, I don't blame Gary for this, because guess what? I wouldn't have it at 70. Correct. I would have sold it at 40 bucks. Because that, that run-up happened pretty quick. And right? it happened real quick yeah. at the 40, and I was like, I'm out. I would have been out we at 40 anyhow. At 40. Yeah, but exactly. I still made a lot of money, but it was because I didn't think independently and say, you know what? I still trust my judgment. And Gary didn't say anything to me besides that made me go, 
oh, shoot, I didn't consider that. All I said was, would you be surprised if Big Lots wasn't around in five years? That was it. And so we didn't buy it. But anyhow, that's that. So let's do Big Lots now. All right, what is the market cap for Big Lots? I would say my last company I worked for, Paul, Big Lots is incredibly concerned with their client experience, actually. Are they? Um, Are they really? They, they had training. We, we, I worked with a, a company that brought seminars in on how to just make your workers get on the same page. Oh, and, Focus 3? Yeah, and really train, really get your workers to increase that beautiful client experience. That's what they're working on. I don't know how their experience is, but um, yeah, Big Lots is in it. You, we might have done a show on this many, many months ago, Did Paul, we? when you loved this. I swear this is not the first time we've looked. Tim, do you remember an old Big Lots show where Paul said he loved it? Back in like September or something? September? I'm telling you, it was a long time ago. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I just thought it had been before then. That's why okay. I said that. Here All we right. go. Um, $2.6 billion company. PE of four. <laughs> Profit margin. That's a check. Profit margin of 10. That's a check. Double check. Yeah. PE is four, four still, guys. That can't be right. Is that right? Big lots. It's showing six hundred thirty yeah, million dollars right. in profit. Google says four. Now I will say this though: net income of six thirty and free cash flow of three hundred. So there's a disconnect there, but they are paying a dividend of, dividend of forty three million bucks. Okay. Pillar number Next. three is revenue growth for big lots. Revenue growth five point two six point two check mark. Nice job, Gary. Is it going to be around in five years? Yeah, the revenue is going up. Big lots. Wow. Okay. Um, how about profit growth? Is pillar okay? Number so here's revenue. the profit growth. 150 to 630. Do what? But here's the deal, Seth. What do you have right here the year before? 220. Yeah, so I can't count this year as like a... Why would they have such a great 2020 big lots? I don't know. You would have thought with retail they wouldn't. They Maybe they had a lot of online orders. They, I have no idea. Yeah, do they, they have an online presence? I don't... I've oh, never, yeah, they do. Do they really? I mean, when I say, oh, yeah, they do. They have... Nobody doesn't have online presence. I mean... TJ Maxx doesn't. What? TJ Maxx doesn't. No, they do. Do they? Yeah, go to TJ Maxx. You can find stuff. Really? Big Lots is headquartered in Columbus, Ohio, with over 1,400 stores in 48 states. So let's Look at keep, this, Uncle Seth. Shares outstanding is pulling over five. What do they got? 44 down to 36. Nice. Yeah. So they're taking their free cash flow and they're doing smart stuff with it. Except, because okay. guess what? If it's low valued, if they think it's low valued, because even if you take out last year, guys, last year's profit, and just based on this previous year, it's still a, a 10 PE. It's still a low PE. That's the other thing. It's still a low PE going based on the year before last. What was the PE when we looked at this last back last year in March? I mean, the PE must have been like a 0.2 something. Oh, it was terribly low. Wow, look at that. 11 bucks Listen, to 70 bucks. I have, uh, I have PTSD about this one. You, you, you <laughs> big lots, to B-I-G-T-S-D or whatever. Okay, yeah. um, how about, uh, what do we have? That was shares. How about uh, current assets? We already got that one, Paul? Nope, 1.6 billion versus 1 billion. So check mark there. That's all. Which is very hard for retail. A lot of retailers don't have that. Now I can hear Paul's grundle purring with six straight checks. What about free cash flow, Paul? Give it to me, pillar number seven. Well, I think we're missing uh -oh. some data. See how I build it up there and it just falls flat. So let's, um, <laughs> Uncle Tim, <laughs> can you ask uh, the devs why the data from March, January of 2021 is not filling on big lots and other companies? What you're looking at is Everything Money Software. Our patrons have access to this. We know they love it because they tell us every day in the Discord, personal chats, emails on LinkedIn that they love the new software, but it is brand new and there are a couple bugs. Not not many, but there are a few and sometimes you come across a couple. So now here's the deal. The, 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 the capital expenditures are in here somewhere. It's just not showing up on here because if you look, cash from operations and cash flow are different. So 222 to 296, check mark there with an average of 130. Check. So if you look right here, there was a big year of a loss of 150 in free cash flow. I wonder, I mean, look at that. Here's the good news, Seth. Mm -hmm. Do you see any other losses besides that one year? No, look at that, all the way back to 10 years ago. Yeah, they do a great job at having this. So find out what that cash flow loss was for. Please find that out because that is important to make sure it's not something that could occur on the horizon again. But at 130, what was the market cap? 2.6 billion. Divided by 130, that is 20. 20. That's a check for pillar number eight. Uh, I don't know if it's exactly a check. It's probably not. It's probably an X. It's probably a little over 20. Okay. Let's go to our trusty eight pillar uh, tab. Oh, please do. It, yep. Oh, look at that. It missed it by... <laughs> it missed it by 0 0.02. Seth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laughing that you do that in your head. You're like, eh, it's over 20. I mean, uh -huh. you're just so fast at this. It's amazing. So... Well, um, what do you think, uh, Paul? Here's what I'm confused, and folks, if you're confused as well, um, maybe you're like me. Is this now this this thing is skyrocketing? Paul. Yeah, I don't like the price of free cash, flow. but it's still almost meeting eight pillars. So, yeah, I just don't like the price. I don't think for a retailer like this, you can give it this kind of premium on free cash flow. I want to see a much lower free cash flow. I want to see like ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
which by the way, last year's free cash flow actually was actually about 10. So I guess you would sit there and say, it's actually less, it's actually eight. So if you sit there eight and a half, nine, so if you think that last year is gonna repeat over and over and over again, which I'd be apprehensive to think that, but if you do think it's gonna be, it's gonna recur over and over and over again, this could be a good play for you. Me personally, and maybe it's because I liked it at 11, now it's 70 and my bias is coming in, I'm not jumping up for joy for, um, for big lots. But if you think that last year could repeat itself over and over and grow from there, I think you'll do very well buying big lots today. Mo, are they jumping in joy in the Bidnast Nation for big lots? It's a I real mean, question. Let's see. You could have grabbed this thing back in, let's say, January when it was coming through the sweet spot at whoa, $50 and rode this thing up. I mean, it had a great trend. It moved through the sweet spot and then it moved sideways on you and just slowly continued to climb. So when you get into that overbought area, over 80% on your stochastic, it's not exit the position. It's just be a little bit more cautious, maybe put some stops in place so that when you do drop below for a brief amount of time, like it did, you're not losing everything. So what do I think right now? I mean, I don't think it's an ideal stock to get into the for the first time, but if you can break out and make a new all-time high, I think all-time high, go ahead and uh, keep adding to it and keep making money on it if you've, if you've had it this whole time. Jordan, one of our OG uh, patrons. He's back, there. baby. He's back, baby. You know, I love you, Jordan. I missed you. One of the first top top 10 or 15, he's in there. Um, so, Paul, that that's a, this is a funny one. Eight, uh, well, seven almost pillars. seven pillars on Big Lots. What is your final take on this thing? I'm not gung-ho about it at these levels. I know, f don't look at that 4 PE. It's a little misleading. Look at the free cash flow here. Um, the free cash flow could be single digits if you think last year is going to continue on for the foreseeable future with a little bit of growth. You don't need it to grow a ton. If it just keeps up three or four or 5%, you'll be fine. But I'm not gung-gung. I don't think this is a major value play. But if you think that the last year can continue, buying at this price will still be okay for you long-term. Paul, I wanted to get your thoughts. You know, I just casually looked up the number of stores that Dollar General has. And that Big Lots, is it comparable to Dollar General? No, it's a bigger store. Well, you'd be surprised, Mo, to think, hear that, that- So Big Lots sells more uh, I mean, they sell furniture and stuff. Yeah. They have tons of furniture. Okay, so that, Dollar General is more like... Okay, it's two different places. Those not stop shop. There's 16,000 Dollar Generals. Yeah. Um, there's only 1,400 big lots. It's a huge... Maybe there's room for growth. Who knows? But yeah. um, that's just my take. I thought there was Well, I think with, but the thing is, the reason I like big lots, though, too, they buy a lot of closeouts, right? Is that yes. correct? Yeah. So there'll always be closeouts. And I do think the retail world of closeouts is going to be the harder world to replicate online. Because even though TJ Maxx has an online presence, you gotta remember still that they're sending things to random locations. They want people to go to their stores. I do think the closeout retail world will be a lot slower to get online than the other world. So never say never, but I do think Big Lots will have a good presence. And plus their market, they're, they're trying to appeal to, I mean, they're not trying to appeal to the highest, highest income, even though everybody in this room has been to a Big Lots, I think. Yeah, that, that's our final take on Big Lots, I guess. Um, oh, moving on. Yeah, I yeah, am, Paul. <laughs> um, if you're joining us late, uh, here's the story. We do accept $10 donations to um, to hear a stock. But before you go there, we have so many people who have already donated. We have a long list of stocks we're going to go over right now. We certainly appreciate the donations. And, Paul, tell everyone where the donations are going this week again. I totally forgot. My apologies. American. Mo is picking. Yeah, I can't remember. American Society of Suicide Prevention or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. We'll get the exact name. Okay, come that back steel to me trap in a line. Yeah, that's great. So um, <laughs> last, week, the, last week was the Akron Children's Museum here in Akron, Ohio. They were very appreciative, Paul. And so this is good stuff. American, what was the week before? What's that? American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Great. Yep, and the week so, before last was? Destiny Rescue. Destiny Rescue. And the week before that was Faith Alive USA. Some place in Africa, they're helping African folks get out of sickness. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's something I've been supporting. And the other thing is, I think next week, Go on. I'll be doing the Innocence Project. Oh, you love this. Love the Innocence <laughs> Project. You and I both love this. Oh, yes. that lady. I like that lady. Which lady? The one from, what's it called? Yeah, Making a yeah, Murderer. Innocent yeah, Proje the Innocence Project will be next week. I'm a big fan because I really think it's awful that people go to jail for things. And then 20 years later, they're like... Oops, we were wrong. Sorry, here's 40 grand. <laughs> you know, it's 40 like, grand, yeah, that's I mean, it's literally what they get. It's like 40,000 yeah. a year. It's, it's ridiculous. Okay, the next company that we got a donation for from uh, on a Patreon or Bing is AVGO. Is the ticker symbol AVGO? This Broadcom. is Broadcom, Broadcom Inc. This is a semiconductor manufacturing company. Did anybody notice we hit a record? No, yeah, I didn't. I did. What is the record now? 
I just saw 446. Oh, so. thanks everyone for watching. We love you out there. You know yeah. that, damn it. You know I love you. Um, it's American it's, designer, developer, manufacturer, global supplier of a wide range of semiconductors, infrastructure, software products. They are in San Jose, California, and uh, they have 21,000 employees. This is broad. What other major, what other major uh, tech companies in San Jose? I'm uh, sure there's tons of them. Oracle, but they're moving, I believe. Isn't Oracle moving to Texas? Yep. I'll be darned. I didn't know that. They yeah. gone. This is... Broadcom, let's go, but what is the market cap for Broadcom? $185 billion, Jeez. PE of 47, that's an X, uh -oh. but profit margin of 16%, that's a check. We'll take it, okay. Uh, dividend, big dividend, almost 3% right here though. So 5.4 billion a year in dividends they pay. Okay, how about the revenue growth? The, the stock is way up our price. I mean, this is gonna, probably going to be overvalued right off the bat, I think, Paul. Off the dribble, you would say. Off the dribble. 15.6 uh, to 25, 24.7. Check mark there. Yep. Okay, that's good revenue. Profit over the past five years is pillar number four. They lost a billion nine to gaining four billion. Check mark there. Jeez, jeez. Well, look at these Look at these numbers, though, Seth. This is weird. Lost two billion, made 7.8, made 6.5, made 2.6, made four. This is not a very consistent profit company. So you need to factor it in there when you're looking at this company. You might have some ups and downs. Understand why that may be. Maybe they take a lot of vacations. Okay, pillar number five is shares <laughs> outstanding. <laughs> shares outstanding. You want this number going down. This thing's all over the place. 399 to 407. That's an X. Oh boy. Okay, X for shares. I think they made an acquisition though, it looks like. Because look, they went from 277 to 399 from 16 to 17. They probably made some acquisition and gave shares for it. Pillar number six is current assets over current liabilities. And by the way, current assets and current liabilities is probably another pillar I will be changing out at some point. Come on, you're scaring me. Yeah, well, I'm going to keep PE because I actually thought about it more and more going, I like the idea of seeing PE versus cash flow, but total current assets, current, current liabilities, eh, anyways. Keep going. Pillar number 14.3 billion versus 6.7 billion. Big check mark there. Good. A lot of debt though, guys. Forty-six billion just in long-term debt. Big debt. Free cash flow is pillar number seven. Is it going up, Paul? Oh my lordy! Look at this. Give it to me now. Three point three eight to twelve point three eight. Come on. Yeah, check mark. And it's going up every year, unlike profit. Look at this. Literally every single year, it's gone up. Look at that. Average of seven point five billion, and their market cap was one eighty. Eighty-five. So what is that? What is it? Um, it's it's twenty five. One eighty five divided by what? Seven point five. Let's see what it is. It's twenty four point six. Of course, it's twenty five. So twenty five. That's an X. Now. Oh boy. One eighty five divided by last year's twelve point four is fifteen. Okay. So you're it's at fifteen times last year's free cash flow. Which I still think is a lot for a company this mature. This is a big mature company. Um, with not a lot of growth potential. I would I would guess so. How I feel about this one, I don't exactly know. Um, uh, I mean, look at that revenue growth. They may, uh, well, they made some acquisitions. Let's see what they made acquisitions here. What acquisitions have they made? Big acquisition, big acquisition, big acquisition. Oh, they've made big acquisitions in, in four of the last five years. So guys, they're growing through acquisitions. Their return on invested capital is and, re, and, and our return on assets is very low. 5%. That doesn't make me very excited. Um, uh, you know, I don't, I, this is way too high of a price to pay for. Now, the good news is they can afford their dividend of 5.4 billion, but imagine this price fell in half. And those of you who don't think it's going to fall in half, I, I mean, just, it's just too expensive. It's just flat out too expensive. That's it. At 442 is the trading price. It got as high as 485. You're saying this puppy needs to fall in half? And look, in May of last year, it was 260. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it's just too much for me. <laughs> Our followers are hilarious. Said, How willy nilly are these pillars? How can you call it a pillar if they're changing in and out? It's a, That's it's a good a, question. That's a good question. So well, let, me I mean, ask, it, let me answer a couple questions about that one. Because no, I do want to answer that. Well, as time okay. goes on and I investigate more and more companies, that was just like a, the, the, eight, the eight pillars was to say, like, let me look at these things really quick. But now that I've gotten into more retail people, do you guys? You guys really fixate on these things. And I look and go, okay, if we're really like a fixate, I would look at it in passing and saying, these are the eight things I looked at before doing more due diligence. Now, I want to be able to give you guys eight pillars. You can sit there and say, I love this or I don't. And to me, profit margin and current assets over current liabilities is something to look at, but not something to really focus on. And that's why I want to switch them out.
I was doing much more like these are the eight things I look at real quick, get my feel for it and move and, and go to the next information I need. So it's a very good question. Hey, how willy nilly are these things? And yeah, go also, ahead. It's not very willy nilly. I mean, we, how, how many months have we been saying, is this a good idea? Is this not a, you know what I'm saying? I've been saying? talking for a while about it's changing It's been a very long time. And look, like, at, and look at PE. I thought about yeah. it and thought about it. Like, you know what? I'm going to keep PE because I like the idea of comparing PE <laughs> to free cash flow. What's so funny? Mason said maybe call it eight pieces of drywall. <laughs> not pillars. <laughs> Mo, are people trading Broadcom? One. What's the story with the, with the volume and, and, the, and, the, and the, the candlesticks? What's going on over there? So uh, this is for sure a downtrend, <laughs> and it, you could short, you could be short on it right now. But um, the if we go back to December, I mean, you see this resistance point right here, and it just keeps. This is a support level. It dropped down there and it bounced back up. I do foresee it hitting this support level again around maybe a little above 420. Ha ha ha. And bouncing <laughs> off of it and rebounding. So I don't know. Let's just see what happens. I mean, look, if you let's zoom out a little bit further. He said, ha ha ha. <laughs> this is going back to last year. Okay, this I'm glad I did this. This is going back to last year. This is the last time you were in the sweet spot at moving up April of last year. Look how many times you've just been going sideways and doing these sweet spot reversals over and over. So even though it's coming down right now, I wouldn't go short on this just for that reason. You're going to probably bounce off that 420 and bounce back up unless you get some kind of bad news on this earnings date of 6-3. That's it. Oh, that's earnings coming out in a month? Yep. That is our take on Broadcom. Thank you, Orbing, for giving it to us. All right, Paul, I have three more on the list from our beautiful people who have donated. Um, oh. Steven Stevens wants to look at this ticker symbol GFF. Steven, thanks for the donation. This is Griffin Corporation. It's a multinational conglomerate company. That's the most generic thing. You know, I know that sounds I said like the same thing. Um, it, it has Wait a second, five, GFF. A GFF. It has five subsidiaries: Ames, Closet Made, Clopay so Building Products, Cornell Cookson. I've never heard of any of these, but apparently they're out of New York. Um, and wow, okay, the. The, the ticker symbol is GFF. We've never seen this before. Let's get after it, Paul. $1.4 billion company, 19 PE, check, 2.93% profit margin, X. Two? two? Yeah, 2.93. <laughs> a dividend of $15 million a year, about 1.1%. Look at this return on assets and return on invested capital. Very low. 3%. So guys, I don't want to get too much in the details of this, but return on invested capital, I've had a conversation with Gary about this. It's the way to look at it is versus its weighted average cost of capital. Now that's where it becomes difficult how you figure this out. You want the return on invested capital to be above the weighted average cost of capital, which means they're getting a better return than their average cost of capital. If they're getting a high, if it's higher, some people say two or three percent, then you have a company that's making, that's doing a good job. They're making every they're making economic profit as they grow. Okay, so. That's why these are important because the higher and higher these are, the more you should pay for the company because they reinvest their capital at a much higher rate of return. Shall we look at their revenue, revenue growth for the past five years? Okay, 1.34 billion to 2.47. That's a pretty big job. That's almost doubling in five years. Profit. Profit growth, pillar number four. 31 to 72. Check mark there. Okay. But look at this. 31, 33, 103, 39, 72. What were you talking about? Uh, Garoy, a, a fan of ours, says, I'm really great at describing what companies do. <laughs> I really am. I just, it's really masterful in my uh, mind. My, my, yeah. Shares outstanding. What's happening? 39 to 50.6. Oh, my God. Hey. That's an X. That's a lot, Paul. What are they doing? That's a big... So go find out why they're issuing... They made a big acquisition, probably. Because look at this. They went from 41 million to 50.6. That's a big jump. You don't just do that unless you're making an acquisition of some sort. Okay, how about pillar number six, which is current assets over current liabilities? 1.1 billion versus 446. Plenty on cash on the hand. Nice. Cash flow. Free cash flow, baby. We have for Griffin Corporation. 87.3 to 125, check mark. But we have an average only of 44 because of a couple of that's not right. 44 million? Yeah, 44 million. Yeah, because they had a loss of 30 one year. You make that in your sleep, Paul. <laughs> yeah. You sound like Hesh. He says the same thing. I'm like, Hesh, come on, give me a break. You make more. So uh, the market cap is $1.4 billion divided by $44 million, which is their free cash flow. And that is a multiple of 32, Paul. Yeah, that's a big X. Yeah, boy. Guys, um, 
the fact that this company is issuing a lot of shares, uh, let's see here. They issue a lot of shares. Um, they have a very low return on invested capital, return on assets. I, I, I just don't feel it. I just feel myself, I'm going to find something else. You're not loving this? Uh, I'm not in love with it. I could do, I, I think we could find better. I think we've already found better. Yeah, I think so. Mo, are they trading Griffin Corporation over there in a bid now? Yeah, you know what? I'm looking at it and I'm going back to 2019 and I just kind of see this resistance point that it just keeps hitting and it can't break through it. So it's at that point again. You can see that it's just kind of gone back and forth here after coming up through the sweet spot very nicely. Um, I really need some, something big. I need a lot of volume. Something that's just going to have to push this thing out and break out over this high of $28 or something like that. That's the only way. I mean, guys, there's 10,000 stocks. Go find a better one. That's my opinion. Yeah, Steven, you know, we love you. I love you. I love you more than life itself. Um, but, um, but, um, but, um, but we're not into Griffin Corporation. Just not, uh, we're not loving it. Right. Did we notice our new cameras? Did you bring that up yet? I brought it up at the beginning of the show, but if Is you it? have just joining us, we have new cameras. These are black magic 6k cameras. Um, <laughs> Um, well, Uncle Paul, Uncle Paul swiped his credit card right. last That's Friday, yeah. and um, and of course Tim helped you out with that purchase because he bought HDMI cables. Paul, wait to see the bill for the new HDMI cables come through the old uh, <laughs> so accounting. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know HDMI cables could be like hundreds of dollars a piece. Seriously? They are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're there. But listen, wow. these are gonna be the last HDMI cables we have yeah. until I break one of them. Okay. <laughs> Um, we're going to keep going. Until, until Paul changes his mind a year from now and goes, new equipment. <laughs> okay. Now, Dimitri, a long time ago. Dimitri, if you're still watching, uh, thanks so much for the donation. He wanted – Paul, it's a Canadian railway company. Do you want to look at this? Why not? Right? For 10 bucks to yep. have it. The ticker symbol is CNI. CNI. This is a Canadian National <laughs> Railway. Um Paul, people are in love with railways. Yikes. And I'll tell you who's in love with them is Warren Buffett. He Why does Warren Buffett like railroad? You tell me, because I'm new at this. What would you guess? He said that something like his railway, Berkshire Hathaway's railways transport 15% of all the goods in the country. Yeah, but that's not business. why he likes railway. Why does he like railway? Monopoly? I don't know. It's tell one me. of the most efficient economically ways to transport goods. Slow as molasses, but the, 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 the slowness is made up for an economic cost. And he has some metric about how much it costs to transport a ton in railway versus truck versus airplane. I mean, it's an insane, it's insanely cheap. So if you don't need your products in the next month or eight years, go by rail and it'll, it'll transport. Shall we look at this? It's Let's Canadian it. National Railway. And uh, what is the market cap for CNI? 78 billion, 26.8 PE, X. Great margin though, 25.8%. Small dividend of 1.7%, which is 1.33 billion. Okay. Uh, return on invested capital, pretty decent actually, about 10%. So not bad. Okay. Um, how about revenue growth over the past five years for Canadian National Railway? I'm actually surprised by this. 9.2 to 10.7 billion. It's a check mark, but not by much. It's actually down. Well, I guess that makes sense. Ordering and all that stuff. Profit growth for Canadian National Railway? It's actually an X, Uncle Seth. 2.95 oh, to 2.89. That's an X. But... Again, who knows what happened last year where orders put on hold because of shutdown, et cetera. We don't know. This company was founded 100 years ago. Wow. Uh, pillar number five is shares outstanding. We want this going down. 766 to 711. Check mark there. Nice. It is going down. Now, this is probably, the shares outstanding is probably one of those underrated pillar we have. Would sure. you not agree? Well, people are asking, would you ever think about weighting the pillars, getting a little more analytical with it, Paul? No. And the reason being is... Um, I stumped you on this one, eh? Uh, well, it's a great question, and we've had that question over and over and over again, and it, it, I do understand that, but I think it also goes against what we're trying to teach about this high-level view. If I wanted to weight them, I think that'd be more of a, let me weight them and give myself a decision to make right now. Yeah. This is more of, because the shares outstanding is great, unless the company's massively overpriced and they're buying back shares, you don't want... That's not a CEO who's thinking right economically. You know what I mean? That's not thinking the right way. So it's all dependent on these things. But I do think shares outstanding is one of the most underrated um, uh, pillars we have because nobody ever looks at that. Nobody in this world ever looks at that. Some folks are talking about a moat. Paul, can you describe what a moat is, what that means? It sounds scary. So a moat is what Warren Buffett talks about when he talks about he wants a company that has a moat around it. Very hard to enter the market or even compete. For example... Go start a video service, a video, an online video uh, company to compete with YouTube. Tough to do. It's going to be extremely difficult to do. Google and YouTube have such a stronghold in the market that 
Yes, people can go start another version, but it'll be very, very difficult to compete with that. I mean, look at Microsoft with all of its resources, couldn't fight Google with their Bing website. What are you laughing about there, Seth? Oh, another nice donation from Reed. Um, I forgot his uh, Reed's uh, profile picture is Dale Earnhardt. So he just said, raise hell, praise Dale. I don't know that boy hates him. I, yeah, I love it. He loves Dale Earnhardt. Oh, does he? Let me tell you. Um, so, you know, DGF was in that, they, they used our product, my, my graphite spray, my other company, DGF, they, um, that, that team used our, our product. So, yeah. um, big ups to Dale. Big, uh, <laughs> big ups to Dale. <laughs> okay. Let's keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, it would be pretty difficult to start a railway company and get them tracks down all over the country. I see what Warren Buffett's talking about. Yeah. Here. So, um, are we on free cash flow yet? Yeah. No, no we're at current assets. 2.52 oh. versus 2.66 in liability. That's an X. Oh boy, they're, not, they're not doing good here. Well, there. Free cash flow growth over the past five years is pillar number seven. 2.03 to 2.68, check mark there, yeah. with an average of 2.1. What was the market cap? Oh, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. Market cap was 78 billion. 78 billion divided by 2.1 equals 35, no. 37. Yeah, okay. That's a big X. 37. That's I ain't a, touching that. You're not, well. Let's say off, off the bat, I can just be like, I'm not touching the that. The stock price is at 109. It used to be 117. Back when COVID hit, it was all the way down to 68 I mean, bucks. Look at the eight pillars yeah, here. Look at that. Uncle it's Seth. all over the place. Sloppy. 26, 36. Those are probably the most important ones. And uh, that's bad. Dimitri, I appreciate the, uh, the, the the suggestion and the donation, but Paul is not into it. I'm not surprised with these numbers all over the place. Mo, what about trading CNI? What do you think? So it's it's coming down right now. It's for sure short. And you can see that it's just kind of sitting right at that white line. That's the 200-day moving average. And it's been there for maybe about 10 days. So if it if it if if you get something where it drops below the 200-day moving average and starts moving down, you can probably get at it and go short on it. But until that happens, until it goes below like really goes below uh, $108.18, and I mean like clears it, like gets down here, then I wouldn't touch this thing. So yeah. Can I thank some people? Please do, Paul. Ronnie, Rodney, Ronaldo, I don't even know how to pronounce this name, uh, Elias, Casey, Belige, thank you, Roman, thank you very much for signing up for our Patreon and signing up for our software. Our software is awesome. People love it. We're already almost at 2,200 people who are using the software, which is three times more than we were hoping to end the year at. This thing is on its way to making, to having 50,000 subscribers, 50,000 users, and we're just gonna make the software better and better every single month. The last stock we have in donation from Henry is is this company Innoviva. Innoviva. Ooh. Now this is something hot, Mo. Right? You know about yeah, this. Something's I going do. on. Innoviva is a pharmaceutical company out of uh, San Francisco, founded in 1996. Uh, and what, what what's going on with this company, folks? I, I don't know, obviously, but Mo, you are in these pharmaceuticals. You love this stuff. What's, why do people are loving this? I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, this thing has been this thing has been something in the news for a very long time. Is it? Be, are they doing something with COVID or something let that us, I don't know? Let us know in the chat if we're missing out on something. If you have this information about I N V A, is a typical symbol I N V A. Tim, this is a good one for us to produce later. Actually, I N V A. Paul, would you like to get into a uh, Innoviva? Absolutely. Pharmaceuticals. $1.2 billion company, 5.2 PE. Okay. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Check mark. Profit margin of 66.7%. 66. Check mark there. Oh, that's amazing. Profit last year of 224, 294 in free cash flow, and a 25% return on assets. Any dividend with this company? Paul? No oh. dividend. This is a small company, so I imagine there's not going to be much dividend. Okay. Uh, pillar number three is revenue growth for the past five years for Innoviva. 133 to 336. Is Check it, mark there. Is it Innovi? I can't even pronounce this stuff. You know, it's Innoviva. Innoviva. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Mo. Yeah. Um, wow. Wait, what did you just say? Yeah, you heard me. 130, one, 133 to 336. Okay. Profit of 59 to 224. Check mark. Seems good. That's yeah. four straight checks. Mo, what drug do they have or what, what, what's making them famous? They over have there? this drug Trilogy. You've seen the commercials for it, I'm sure. I'm it's, assuming it's old people walking in the park with their dog. That's and then exactly they, then right. They gonna... That's exactly right. Okay. It's for COPD. It's all anything that has to do with breathing. It's basically an inhaler. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yep. Here okay. it is, Trilogy inhaler. Oh, okay, Paul. Let's go to pillar number five, which is... Uh, sure is outstanding. I'm surprised of... by this, Seth. Uh-huh. 107.7 to 101. That's a check mark. Oh, a check. Look at that. Yeah, I that's what I'm saying. I'm surprised by this. All pillars. Pillar number six is current assets over current liabilities for... 342 versus 6.1. Check mark there. Jeez Louise, yeah. they're rocking. That's all of them. Free cash flow, I'm assuming, is absurd, Paul. Wouldn't you think? Yes. Let's find out. Jonas is a big fan of this. 46.6 to 294. Check mark there. Oh my gosh. 
cash. Yeah. Come and on. then the average is 200 million. This is selling for five. Oh my God. 5.4 two, two, times free cash flow. 200. Okay, guys, here's the bottom line. Okay. Give How much time is left in this drug with patents? What other things do they have in the pipeline? Could somebody come and acquire them? If all of these answers are good answers, you're buying this company. Yeah, this is a magic formula stock. I mean, this um, is incredible. The return on assets is high. But again, with these small young drug companies, they tend to have one or two products and that's it. So yeah. you gotta make sure there's a lot of runway on that patent. These guys have three three drugs that are pretty much all in the same in the same area. But how much time is left in each patent? I don't know. I'd have to start digging into that more. Somebody just sent me a great meme. You want to hear it? Yes. As someone who made money off of GameStop, Dogecoin, and a lottery ticket this year, the best financial advice I can give you is just be an effing idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get to that, that that coveted shorts check on Paul. Oh, Su we're doing Su a shorts check? Susie uh, wants us to say hello to Christian. Christian, welcome to the show. Who's and Christian? Uh, that's just that's her son. Oh, uh, hey, what Christian. Was, oh, hi, I was buddy. talking about him today. Sister so, Christian, Christian, thanks for watching. We love you. There you go. Yes, all right, now, the, all, the, the, what you've all came here for is the is the weekly Paul Shorts check. He's got those firm buttocks, that frothy midsection, and look at him go. He's doing his dips, his squats, and he's just loving it. And there you go. We're going to get mo moving forward, Paul. I think that our dream is going to come true is having a full Paul Shorts cam. We just cut what right to the- about my shoes, too? Right are these nice the, shoes? Those are, those are fly shoes. You look like Pee Wee Herman in those shoes. No, I don't. Yeah, we're going to have a full Paul Shorts cam. We can cut to it whenever we want to see the crotch grundle and the buttocks area, which is so uh, devastatingly amazing. And it's why, look, look at the comments are pouring in. I can't even keep up with the grandpa shorts. That's right, Paul Price. Yeah, thank you. I like the kicks, too. They're awesome. Dad bod. Kids are watching. This is- Dad great. bod? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you, you you're mature. <laughs> Is this a dad bod? Well, you're not a 22 year old kid anymore. You I know? think I'm better shape than when I was 22. That's true. I mean, <laughs> I don't, hey, how's your weight doing? Uh, I'm, I'm still 15 pounds down. My clothes are fitting. People are starting to notice. It's a great feeling. I feel better. Um, and uh, so I got, I got 25 pounds to go. I got to go further than that to meet our, our goal, Paul. So um, this is exciting. But um, boy, um, it's the first time anything's ever stick. I've been doing this since January, early January. Yeah. So anyway, um, Mo, Mo, they really want to know what you're talking about in that bid and nation, the, the traders, the momentum traders about INVA. I mean, so right now it's a downtrend for sure. Um, but you, they have a lot of support right here, whatever this is, $11, $11.20. I want to pull up the daily chart and let's see what we're doing with moving averages. Okay. So the bad news for them is that they are under all four of their major moving averages. Man. That's not good. So you see this block of volume right here, this five-day period? That you need this over here, and that's what's going to drive this price up through all of these moving averages. You need to go through 200 moving average, 50, 25, and then the 100. So this is going to need a lot of volume. This is the kind of volume that you need for multiple days in a row to get this thing to push through. Be very careful with this one. Be very careful. Paul, what what else do we need to look at for Innovivo? I mean, I, I'm getting this is exciting. Like I said, it's all about how much time's left on, those, on the on the drugs that they have because the patents are everything. The second they go generic, listen, I, I take Propecia for my hair. The second Propecia became generic, what did I do? Went I can afford to pay 140 dollars for for Propecia, but it became 14 dollars. Which one do you think I went? I went to Finestride for 14 bucks. Why wouldn't I? So it's it, all about the patent. That's all that matters. The patent. So. Make sure there's a lot of time left. I don't know how much is a lot of time, 10, 12 years left, enough to justify your returns, make your assumptions based on the drug falling off, et cetera, and see what you want to do. Is there a specific a cash payout if someone can beat you in a 40-yard dash? So are you referencing John Thiesing? I am. So John- How does he know about I this? like you a lot. You're a very nice oh, gentleman. Boy, I better get the bleep button ready. But, but I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way you're beating me. So Mo's girlfriend- How does he know about this? I was talking with John this weekend oh, okay. and talking about how Paul can beat anybody in the 40 yard dash. I can, I've lost the two Except people in 40 yard dash Gator, Gator and a guy named Ricky. And both of them had four 340s. I don't believe Gator had a four 340. I do believe Ricky had a four 340 because he smoked me. Gator said he thought I had him off the dribble, but then he smoked, he went past me and he beat me by about, which is a lot in a race. What about, is the cash payout for beating Paul for pay? I want to see fans. some money put up first. Oh, I see. Well, yeah, well, I'm not going to just offer be, money it has out to be, there. It has to be mutual because. Paul has to be able to make money too. Yeah, give me 20 bucks and you beat me, I'll give you uh, 100. Z Survival says, I'll bet you and Mo 1,000 he beats you in the 40 yard. Younger, younger guy. That's Zach. Younger guy. So, um, Zach, you'll beat me. I, I mean, I'm just you, flaming here. I, sure I could, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's, let's do this, Paul. Uh, 
Let, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the Stockmo uh, reaction video. And people okay. say you were too harsh. You, you, you attacked him personally. Uh, would you like to double down on your comments about Stockmo? What? Yes. Oh. Not you, Mo. <laughs> I got $20. Mo can be pulling a 40 at him. I'm going to tell you right now. Guys, you, you I, seem, couldn't, I couldn't beat uh, You seem like a nice guy. Anybody in a 40. I know. You want to take down the god. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> It ain't going to happen. I've literally beaten trained athletes who are trained in running, and I've never been trained in running. I run like an idiot. I run like this. Poor form, laser timed. Granted, it was 10 years ago. It was a 4.7. <laughs> laser timed, poor form, never been trained in running. So suck it. And Spe I don't go over three miles per hour unless it's in a car. Well, <laughs> speaking of suck it, talk about your reaction to Stock Mo and how people were uh, a little We got a lot of hate. You were, they were just basically upset about how you attacked him personally, Paul. And I'm sure he's a nice guy, but um, you can't put up with that for a moment. So... I, I get it. I was a little harsh, but see our other reaction videos, besides Kathy Wood, and I wasn't as harsh. Guys, I literally view this world of finance very seriously, and I think it's a backwards world, and I feel like it's my responsibility to call people out when they're being inconsistent, inaccurate, and when, it, when the information's so obvious out there, and he wasn't doing what he said he was gonna do. He literally said in a video, I'm buying this, and I'm gonna hold it even if we don't get this contract. The contract doesn't happen, he's sold immediately. It's hypocrisy. No, no other information changed in the company except for the contract with Knight, but he just saw the stock price falling. But he talks about fundamentals, he talks about all these things. He doesn't really believe these things. And I just, I'm sorry, it is mean, but I gotta call people out on that because it's not right they mislead. I'm going to make mistakes, but never once will my mistakes be misleading on purpose and even I won't make a comment on something unless I feel that I have some understanding of it. Will I have full understanding? Absolutely not. But will I have some understanding? Yes. You'll hear me say, I don't know. Talk about chart reading. If somebody came to me tomorrow and said, Paul, what do you think about engulfing candlesticks? I'll say, what is an engulfing candlestick? I don't even know. And Mo's on the channel. And he's a good friend of mine. Yeah, the thing I can't get over stock Mo is that, guys, if, 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 if he was, we, we catch the people who watch him lose their ass and then come over to us, lose their money. And Paul, Paul, he does um, he does recorded videos, and he still his sentences just sound so much like he has no idea what he's talking about and complete BS, folks. What you don't may not know is we record episodes. Most all of this is always one take. We rarely, rarely. double back on a, a single sentence. I yep. mean, this is all literally off the top of your head. And, and, and by the way, that can be a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because it shows I really have an idea of what I'm talking. I know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> We're not, we're just, we're really trying to educate and not hype. And I think that Kathy Wood, Stockmo, people like that are all about the hype. That's how they make their money. Fine by me. That's why I've never been in the money management business. I don't ever want to do You know, we had a very nice um, patron the other day. I think she's in the chat today, Laura, messaged on Patreon and said, hey, how do I invest in your company? That was because Seth had reminded me, Paul, you said, I was saying it sarcastically. We, I didn't want to bring investors in the company because I want to be able to do the things that I want to do the way I want to do them. And I don't want to tell somebody tough luck. I pay Seth on revenue. I pay Mo on revenue. I pay Tim on revenue. Why? Why do I always bring that up, Seth? Well, because you aren't, you think much longer than. Yes. You, you think longer than I could possibly comprehend sometimes because uh, I said this on the show is, you know, like uh, I have normal people don't think like you. And so like, it, it takes some time. That's why I urge our viewers is like, it might take you six months to get into the bid and ask nation and doing, doing the great things that stock mode is like getting your mindset, right? Which again, me folks, six years Yeah, tonight, folks, <laughs> uh, we have a full two hour episode with a great guest and the whole, it's basically about mindset All of building mindset. businesses, overcoming adversity. And so I still very much feel like I, I get, I get a first, first row seat of learning from you and it does take time. So like a lot of times, you know, I might look dumbfounded over here and I really am because we're not as fast I, way, as you and as gifted, I assume. And I've had investors before in the deals and they end up being very high maintenance. I remember once we did three house flips back in the, back in 2009, 2010, back when the market was terrible. We did three house flips. The first one did 55% in a matter of four months. The next one did 52%. The third one did 44%. You know what happened? I got hatred on this one. Mm -hmm. I got hatred for making somebody 44% in six or nine months. And I said right then and there, okay, if I ever take investors on ever again, I'm going to tell them if I ever hear anything from you, not only will you get your money back, you'll be dead to me. I got hatred for making 44% on a house flip. If you find any house flip right now who can give you 44%, I did this in the peril of the real estate market. 
But because it wasn't 55 or 52 and they saw four in front of it, I said, I'm out. So the reason I bring this up is I'm all about doing what's right for tomorrow, not for today. And that's a very hard thing for a lot of investors. That's very hard for Kathy Wood. That's very hard for Stock Mo. And I feel like they talk about long-term. Kathy Wood drops the, I'm a value investor of Tesla grows 90% a year. Well, yeah, I'm a value investor of Amazon grows 150% a year, but it ain't gonna happen. And if it does happen, it's more likely that it doesn't happen than does happen. And the higher pay, I look at it from, a, from an approach of what's more likely? Is my, is my potential gain more likely than the potential downside? If the answer is yes, you'd make those investments. And the answer is no. When things are good though, people, oh, people can confuse luck, with good markets and luck with being a genius. That's Kathy Wood, that's Stockmo. I will always, always for the rest of the time call that out. Can you make it clear to the over 400 viewers why you won't be showing your exact amount of money you make on all these transactions like every other YouTube channel, Paul? You know, it's, I'm, I'm okay being open. I'm open with a lot of people on other things. Seth knows a lot about me, Mo does, Tim does, not Quinn, because I don't really trust Quinn. I don't either. But, <laughs> but, but Quinn's Mason's brother and Connor. I, I, I don't want to sound like it's bragging, I just want to be like, listen, I do very well. I will be a billionaire someday. I have more than I need. That's all that really matters. All these other YouTube stars, they have to make their money off the hype. And the hype wins because they show the flash. I don't need to do that. If you said to me, if, if half the group right now said, Paul, I want to have nothing to do with you. You're an idiot. Fine. I'm okay with that. I've got nine, 10, whatever number of businesses upstairs. They all generate me cash flow. I'm okay with that. But what matters more to me is the teaching. Because I teach at my high school at my, and, I, and soon to be a law school for free because I enjoy teaching. I found a way that I can make money while teaching and also providing some service. So I'm not gonna do the flashy things, things like even Seth wants to do like a tour of the house and stuff like that, which I'm okay with for our patrons. I've always said for our patrons, I will do more, mm -hmm. right? We show up the watch collection, it's for the patrons. But in terms of the other stuff that needs to be done for marketing purposes, I refuse to do that. And Seth has seen that from day one. We used to do other things and I'd be like, yeah, we're not doing this. But it is a gajillion dollars. I mean, it's a, it is a gajillion dollars. It's Mexico homes. It's nice cars. And but you are very humble, and you always. Well, pay I don't very humble, but I can't. I'm more humble than I than I uh, could be. Than most people would be in my position. And you always pay for all of our meals. Yeah, but I look at that it's as kind of nice like. Of um, it's just nice of you. Seth, I have go a ahead, Mo. For you. Go ahead. You remember that picture that you sent us about Stock Mo's portfolio the other day? Yes. Did you ever verify that? Did mm. we ever verify that? That really disturbed that me. That really, really pissed me off. The fact that, th I, should I say what it is? I don't want to misrepresent. It was $65,000, somebody said. It, the, so, was it? it was in the chat. It was in the chat, right? It was in the chat. I'll pull it up. I don't want to say it if you don't. I, I want to verify first. I don't want to rip the guy for something that he's not. Was it an image or was it a Because he's link? already bad enough. You know, it, may, it very well might have been one part of one portfolio. Maybe okay. he might have, I know he has a. Was it a link or was it a video? He it, has was a, a, it was a picture. He has like, oh, it was a link. Was I it? think it was he has funny money portfolios, the ones where he does with the YouTubers. He, he lets his followers choose the hype stock I see. that they invest in. Okay. And then he claims he's going to put some money into it. Oh, um, yeah. It's a uh, total equity of $63,400. And, and yeah, I mean, that my big, I mean, the guy, his biggest investment was five grand in one company. In that portfolio, I don't know if that's his whole thing, mm. but from the number of patrons that he has and what he's being paid, I see, yeah, and, this and, and, and all this BS that he's pushing, I mean, I, I, I joked about it the other day. Uh, when, I, when I did the GameStop thing for fun, I accidentally put 10 grand into that dumb, stupid stock. Mm -hmm. This guy's talking about how he's a genius, this and that, for, for $5,000 as his major they position. Was, they, was, they were saying he has multiple uh, portfolios. Okay, so all right, all right. One of them. Another thing that I want to talk about stock market, we pointed out in that video, but I think he was like, yeah, you can see this stock just moving up and down. Guys, this is a weekly chart on a weekly stochastic, and I'm showing you movement that happened over, what, a four-month period? The guy had a five-minute chart up, and he was going, oh, yeah, you see the movement, this and that. He had a five-minute chart up. The shortest chart that I use is a 15-minute chart, and that's for day trading. He was using a five-minute five The minute guy chart. doesn't know what he's talking he about. He's talking about. Yeah, he has no right. idea what he's talking about. He goes from five-minute chart to long -term, fundamentals, to, to value, the guy doesn't know what day and, and you know, Gianni makes a good comment. So I wanna comment on Gianni's comment. He said, we're here to learn, we're not here to look at Paul's bank account. So it's interesting you say that, process matters. A guy like Gary, I'm more significantly more than Gary. Gary's a better investor than me. I listen to Gary like I'm you guys listening to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe not that extreme, but the whole point is like, I at least have a, Gary's worth less than me, but I don't look at Gary thinking, oh, right. Gary knows less than me because he, Right. That's the point. That's why we always preach process. 
we always preach process because I, I, I'm more interested in, you know, when, when somebody wants to pitch me something, I, I, don't give me your pitch deck. Don't give me your PDF. Answer questions. Because if you can answer questions and show me things and answer questions that I'm asking you off the cuff, you know your stuff. Same thing here. Even if I have 10 times more money or one tenth of money, what matters is my process, right? And remember the other thing, I grew up with two parents as doctors. I, I started with a good life. I was already with a leg up. Just because I started with a leg up doesn't mean I'm smarter. The way I've handled the money means I'm, you know, I'm better at handling money than most. And that's the thing that Gianni gets is like, it's not just about the bank account. It's also, it's about the process. I'm trying to teach a process. Now at the same time, is it nice to know that the person you're learning from has been successful at it and financially? Absolutely. If Gary was broke, even though he claims to have beaten the market by 6% a year over the last 15 years, I'd be like, wait a second. Are you broke because you spend too much? Or what? That's a different story. But Gary is wealthy, but not as wealthy as me, but he has a great process. That's what matters. We've said so much today, Paul. You've said so much, Mo. Oh, no, the markets are rebounding. Of course they're rebounding. Dogecoin has surged 11,000% in 2021. Yeah, AMC Danny. Entertainment stock is heading for its sixth straight loss ahead of earnings. I can't wait to see what Janet, when Janet Yellen reels back on what she said. By the way, can we talk happening. about Janet Yellen? Yeah, let's talk Please about do. it. So Janet Guys, Yellen is... And I'm glad Warren Buffett said this because a guy, Gary Schilling, who I like a lot, said he didn't see inflation anywhere. And I was like, man, everywhere I go, I see inflation. Warren Buffett, in his annual meeting this week, said every one of our companies is seeing higher costs and higher prices. The, only, the way to fight inflation is raising interest rates. Go back to the early 80s and the late 70s. Paul Volcker was hated back then for doing it because it killed jobs, but it was the right thing to do. He raised interest rates to slow down inflation. That is what's going to happen. When we see prices rising, how you fight it is you increase interest rates. If you increase interest rates, people are less likely to, to borrow money, therefore less likely to spend, and prices are going to flatten out or decrease. Now, haven't they come out and said they're not changing interest rates for at least a year or so? Or they said they're not going to change them until the end of 2023. Well, that, so that seems like a long time. That's what they're saying. But then Janet Yellen still. came out today and she said, nah, maybe we need the interest rates to increase to cool down what's happening in the markets. Guys, when I look at, I, I'm remodeling a house right now. Literally every single vendor we want to hire says to me, I'm 10, 12 weeks out. That's not normal. That just isn't normal. It can't sustain. At some point, then their prices will go up. Their labor prices will go up. Everything will go up according, that's inflation. And the way you fight inflation is higher interest rates. So unless you think today, and Warren Buffett said this in his um, annual meeting. Yes, he did. If you think that interest rates today are gonna be around forever, the stock market probably isn't that overpriced. That is the assumption you're making to pay today's prices. The assumption I'm making is like in 1982, when interest rates were 15% plus, did you think that interest rates are going to be that way forever? No. And 1982 stocks were so low and they went on this huge run. The same way today, interest rates are 0%. If you think this is going to be around forever or for a long time, then yeah, pay stock prices today. But I just have a hard time believing that. Um, Can I be wrong? Absolutely. 10 years ago, I thought, 12 years, 13 years ago, I thought, I thought interest rates would be higher than they were back then. They're actually lower. Uh, people are asking, McEagle's asking, can they pay a whole year of Patreon? Is there a discount? Tim, so we can I, work on that. I think they're, 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 we're working I'm, on that, folks. I have right? a big announcement to make. <laughs> let me get my let me get my, my my horn here ready. I'm no longer gonna allow anybody in Paul's super shorts unless you're an existing oh. Patreon member. Oh, my, I I I miss I misplayed the. the What'd sound. you play? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you play? I missed time to sound. Go ahead, go go. I'm gonna take Paul's super shorts off of Patreon. What? Yes. What I'm only gonna allow now is you have to get into Patreon, enjoy it, and if you want the super shorts. It'll be a flat fee up front in full for one full year because I don't want people coming in and out of the super shorts. I want the dedicated people. Everybody who's in super shorts right now, you're grandfathered in. Everything's fine. And we'll offer a discount for everybody to prepay. But for the super shorts, we are, I'm only going to allow people who are already a Patreon for at least a month to then upgrade. And when they upgrade, it's a payment to us. You'll handle it by emailing us and saying, hey, I want to do Paul's super shorts. I'm going to pay the one-time fee for the year. It's a year up front, and we'll do it that way. Because I really want the, 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 the Super Shorts chat, such a tight-knit community. I want that growing with only people who aren't just trying to dip in and out, dip in and out. Mo, how is it going over in the bid and ask? It's going well. I mean, we're, uh, I mean, people are making a ton of money. Last Friday, I, I, every Friday on the morning show, I read, and morning shows 9 a.m. Every, every day, 9 a.m. Eastern time, Fridays, I read profits and losses. This past week, it was like 
15% gain for the month. And everybody was talking about for the month of April, 15% gain, 8% gain. Everybody's just making a ton of money. So if you come in, you follow the principles. The nice thing about our channel is you have the way that Paul and I invest from the value side, which is, I mean, it's, it's very long term. You're not active every day. If you want to be active every day, come over to the Bid and Ask Nation. You can trade, you can still make gains, and you can do it while mitigating risk. That's the best part. What was that? Yeah, if you, if you want to upgrade, take advantage of that now. Email help at everythingmoney.com and say, hey, I want to upgrade to Paul Super Shorts with a one time payment, and we will, and Tim and, and, uh, and uh, Nick will handle it for you. Portfolio update tomorrow for Mo and I. Myself it's as well. my and Seth is included. Mine's pretty much the same. There's Mine options too. coming in and out, but I, it's going to be awesome. We have a ton planned for this year going forward. Uh, Mo and I are going to do the uh, uh, the employed investor, a look at how you, as an employed person, with maybe not too much time, can start getting into some of these trades and momentum trades. I have some money. I'm going to start throwing around with with uh, not throwing around with with, with and, Mo's rules. Go ahead, Mo. And can I talk about? So I I talked about this employed investor where I kind of give you guys a daily update. It's, it's diff I haven't put these five stocks together. It's very difficult for me to find stocks right now. There's, I want to find stocks for you guys that are not crazy. I'm not going into like a square where we need to be doing something every day. The idea is for you guys to get into something like a caterpillar. Boring, but it grows. And over time, we can make moves. So I, you're not trading this every single week. I don't want you to be trading it every single week. You're working. You're busy. I want you to be maybe making a trade every four to six weeks. It's very hard for me to find stocks that you can do that in, in this market right now. So just be patient with me. The reason it's on a delay is because I am trying to find the best situation for you who's working, who doesn't have time to do this. I do see some people asking about uh, what, what are the patron tiers. Uh, Patreon was pretty, uh, for Paul and I both, was a little confusing about what you get in the tiers. And so what the difference is. And Paul, maybe, you know, Paul, we've never actually done this on the show where we kind of looked them up and... Uh, so describe what's so, going on in here. Here's the deal, guys. This is, for those of you who don't want access to the software yet, want to test this out, low $7 a month, you can get the Discord, talk to people, figure out if it's worth it for you. Then there's the Everything Money Minions. This is $23 a month. And by the way, this used to be eight, and it's got up to 23. It's on its way to 49. At some point in the future, this gives you the software, full Discord, Discord access. It's awesome. And this is the Bid and Ask Nation. This used to be 25. Now it's 64. It's steadily gone up. This one gives you Trader Mo, access to the Bid and Ask Nation, um, the, the Discord chat, as well as learning from Mo about charts and things like that. And you get everything off. And you get every, everything, everything here, you get everything down here. Everything here, you get everything down here. You pretty much get full access. I mean, it, it, it's great. And what we also do is tons of Patreon-only videos. Uh, Friday, May 14th at 6 p.m. Eastern is our, our monthly Patreon fireside chat at Paul's Mansion, where we sit down and do a Patreon-only video about two hours we go, and there's only about 150, 200 people in there. So if you have dire questions about your portfolio, where you're going, how to invest, you can get them in on that day. Um, and go ahead, Paul, what do you got there? So this is YouTube, and this is Patreon. Right now, our focus is about 80% YouTube, 20% Patreon. What I mean by that one is content creation. The goal is, as this gets bigger and bigger, it'll be 90%, 10%. Our goal is to make the focus, our Patreon, our software, it'll only be YouTube just for educating people and the Patreon as it grows. Because right now we have 2,200 people in our Patreon. As this goes to 50,000, it'll all be the focus here. As time goes on, it's just going to be, listen, we need to focus on this group. We want to make this such a great community that people don't leave and go, I am spending 20, 30, $40 a month to get immense value. That is the goal. That is exactly what we're doing here. I told Tim yesterday, all I focus on is how do we make things better for our software and our users? That's it. That's my entire goal. We're already one of the biggest Patreons out there. We're in the top 100 yeah. of all Patreons, I believe. It's amazing. You guys have done great out there. So, all right. Um, that's our show for today. Um, we will see you a big, big episode this evening at seven o'clock, a two hour mindset episode interview that we go through. It's incredible. I'm so excited for it. Um, you guys are going to love it. Yes, Joseph, I will be updating my magic formula portfolio and, um, and yeah, so new portfolios this week. We we're going to do a, 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 a eight pillar list. Paul, we need to update the eight pillar list of the companies that meet that. And of course we'll see you guys talking on Patreon, talking on discord. You know, I love you. Next Tuesday, one o'clock, we're here every Tuesday at uh, 1 PM to um, hit up the live stream. Paul, what do you got? Sit. See you guys. Love you. Thanks. See you, Mo. Love you. Bye, See guys. You guys. Love you. Grab the uh, concurrent. Quinn. <laughs>